Hi, hello, and welcome to Rebel Unicorn Crafts. Today, I want to give you a really quick watercolor crash course. These are the supplies that I'm going to be using, but this will work for pretty much any supplies. If you're working with tubes, you can ignore this piece, but if you have dried pans, one of the things you want to do is pre-wet those colors. Because if you just take a damp brush and dip it into those colors, all you're gonna get is a little amount of pigment. Now, if we actually wet them, spray them, or drip some water on and let them sit for about 30 seconds, you unlock a whole new level of pigmentation. Next up, let's talk wet on wet versus wet on dry. What is this? It basically just means wet on wet would be wet on wet paper or wet on dry is wet on dry paper. In this first little example, you can see I am placing wet paint onto dry paper and it stays exactly where you put it. But if I were to wet the paper just like this, let it soak in for a second and then place some pigment on top of it, it's going to kind of move and spread and soften the edges. The more water you have, the less control you're gonna have. The more dry the paper is in varying degrees, the more it will stay where you place it. If you made a mistake or you just want things to be a little bit lighter, you can always lift colors out. While things are wet, you can take something like a paper towel or your brush and just lift that color out. If it's already dried, all is not lost. You can take a damp brush, very lightly scrub. Don't scrub too hard or you can damage the paper, but you can scrub a little bit and then just lift that out. This will work to varying degrees depending on how staining the color you're using is. Layering is one of the key things to learn in watercolor because sometimes you have to wait and it's hard because Patience can be a very difficult thing to learn, especially when you're excited about a painting. But let's say you had these two shapes and you wanted them to overlap without completely mushing together or kind of blending. And you can see in that first example, I did not wait and all those colors just blended together. It looks beautiful, but it is not layered on top of each other. So we can't see the definition between the two transparent layers. With layering, you do need to make sure that the paper is completely dry. If you're impatient like me, you can use something like a hair dryer to speed up that process and cut down on the drying time. Then when you place your next stroke on top, it will layer nicely and you'll be able to see both strokes with their distinct shapes on top of each other. Brushes are amazing. And I find that working in watercolor Brushes are even more important because they do a lot of the work for you. However, they can't do the work for you if you don't really know how your brush moves and all the different shapes that it can make. So I recommend taking a few minutes when you get a new brush just to get to see all the different brush strokes and shapes that you can make just using some simple different pressures as well as different directions when you move the brush. One really good example of how the brush does the work is if you've seen any sort of kind of floral or botanical type things, you're gonna notice that most of the leaves and the different petals are just going to be the brush using different pressures and moving it down. You're not necessarily having to really paint the entire leaf, you just do one or two strokes to make the leaf. Let's talk about stippling because it can be very useful in watercolor. If you wanted to add some extra color or pigmentation, and I'm adding in a different color just so we can really see that effect. If you were to swipe it on there, you're going to really disturb a ton of those different colors. You're gonna move them around, maybe lift some of the other colors. But if I just stipple it on, it's going to just place that pigment in there and let it kind of settle in the general area where I have placed it. Not only that, it's great for texturizing things on dry paper too. When you're working with watercolor, it's natural that you're going to have some puddles and some standing water. You don't need to necessarily leave them. You also don't need to take them off. It's going to come down to preference. If you do want to remove those, you're going to just take the brush that you're using, dry it off, and then use that to kind of suck up that extra water. Now, let's say you don't do that. What will happen as it dries is that water is going to stay wet there and everything else is going to dry. And then it creates this thing called a back run where you get this really interesting textured area where the water sat, and then the pigment became attracted to the barrier between the wet and dry area on the paper. Ultimately, this is gonna be a personal preference. If you like back runs, this is where you're going to need extra patience to let it kind of sit and dry. Or if you don't like those and you're going for a nice flat, even wash, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you grab that extra water at the bottom of whatever you've just painted. I mentioned a flat wash in the previous one, so let's actually talk about it because a flat wash is basically just covering an entire area in one solid color. And you might think, simple, just grab my color and put it on the paper however I want. 
And if you're going for more of a textured look, that's a great way to do this. However, if you were hoping for a nice even coat, this is actually not going to produce that because different areas of the paper, if you're not methodical about how you place this down, are going to dry at different rates and cause some kind of different effects than you might have anticipated. There are a ton of different ways to do a flat wash. My favorite way when you're working on dry paper is to hold it at an angle and then do something called a drip line technique. You want to make sure you have plenty of the color that you want to place over the entire area mixed up. Then you're going to dip into that wet color, fill up your brush, make a horizontal stroke while holding your paper at an angle. Then you're going to dip your paintbrush back into that water or color that you're using and you want to make another horizontal stroke grabbing that drip line that's formed when you're holding the paper at an angle, pulling it down, repeating this all the way to the bottom of the page. What this does is it deposits the paper at a very predictable rate so that we're methodically placing it down and the paper can dry at an even pace as you move down so it doesn't introduce any of that weird texture. When you do reach the bottom of the page, you want to make sure you suck up that extra water so that you don't have a back run at the bottom, which would kind of defeat the purpose of the super flat wash. This same technique can be used to create gradients. All you need to do to modify this technique once you get it down is just switch over to refilling your brush at some point during this gradient with a different color and you can get a super nice smooth transition between colors. There's a ton more I can tell you about watercolor, but these are some of the very beginner things that you might be interested in knowing or great things to practice when you're getting started. And knowing a few of these things will really launch your watercolor journey. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking the video. Leave a comment down below where you're at in your watercolor journey. Are you just starting? Are you kind of, have you even bought the supplies yet? Are you just curious and maybe even just thinking about buying supplies? I'd love to hear from you. Also, if you have any requests for things that I demonstrate, please place them in the comments below, and I hope that you have a magically creative day.